Hello and welcome to another video about pixels. <laughs> In this video I'm going to change this rainbow set of pixels behind me to the pixels from a live video stream. And from that I'm going to show you how to create an abstract mirror from that video stream based on just the brightness values of the pixels. So let's just dive right in and go ahead and do this. So I'm going to pull up the code uh, for this one and the first thing I want to do is just add a video DOM element here. So I'm going to create a variable called video. I'm going to say video equals create, video, uh, create capture uh, video and I'm going to say video.size uh, 320 to 40. So uh, I'm going to uh, just run this again and we can see there we go. I now have my canvas with random pixels next to the video DOM element. So the next thing I want to do is say instead of making these pixels random, I want to actually just pull the pixels from the video itself. So if I go into the code here, you can see this particular nested loop is looking at every single X and every single Y, finding the pixel, giving it and, and setting its color. And I covered all how this works in a previous video. Link to that now magically. Um, but <laughs> if I make a weird sound, then I hope that an annotation will pop up that will link there. So, um, so, but if I want to look at the video's pixels, the first thing I have to do is just say video.load pixels. Video.load pixels. Now, in addition to the canvas pixels, I want to look at the video pixels. Okay? And here I can actually just say, hey, the, the red pixel for the canvas, I want it to be the red pixel from the video. And the green pixel, I want it to be the green pixel. And the blue pixel, I want it to be the blue pixel. And the alpha, I could get the alpha, but I know it's 255. Why bother looking it up? Let's just put the number 255 in there. So now, if I were to run this, we're going to see, look at that, video in there and the canvas. But notice we've got some stuttering now. So it's a pretty expensive thing. If you've worked in Java or C++ before, you'd be like, what? I can look at a 320 by 240 image, look at all the pixels, no problem. The truth of the matter is, this is a little bit slow in the browser. So even, even though it's working, we've got some performance issues here. So I'm going to deal with those performance issues in a, a, in a way by saying like, well, well, I wanted to make something artistic anyway, so I'm going to do this at lower resolution. Um, but that's going to sort of be the main thing that I'm going to do. But before I get to that, one thing I want to show you how to do is just look at the grayscale or brightness value of each pixel. Now there is a function in P5 called the brightness function, which takes a color and gives you its brightness value. I'm going to do it sort of in a manual, simpler way, which I think is just going to be a bit more efficient here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the those values, I'm going to say R, this is the red value from the video, this is the green value from the video, uh, and this is the, oh, excuse me, and this is the blue value from the video, and one, zero, one, and two. So really what I could do is say R, this is, I'm just breaking this out into different lines of code. And by the way, this is like, hello, image processing 101. I've got an image, I look at its red, green, and blue value, I do something to that red, green, and blue value and set a new pixel. So this is really image processing here. The thing that I'm doing to that red, green, and blue value is nothing. But if I wanted to manipulate them or swap them, so I could go off on another tangent here, but I'm not going to go off on that other tangent. What I want to do is actually just look at the brightness value. And the brightness value for a given pixel is really just the average, and you know, it's it can be more complex than this if you're like a black and white photographer who cares about the nuance of how you grayscale something. But a simplistic thing I could do is just add all the RGB together and divide by three and say, let me set each pixel to a brightness value. So there we go. And now if I refresh this, you're going to see I've got the image on the right live from the video and a kind of grayscale version. I've taken out the colors because I'm making the red, green, and blue values all equal, all equal to the average of their sum. Okay, so this is pretty good, but we've got this issue here where uh, I've got a performance problem. And I want to do this abstract mirror thing anyway, so there's a, there's a solution to this. So I'm going to come over here and talk about what that solution is. Let's say my window itself is 800 by 600. It's not, but let's say I had a can, sorry, the canvas itself is 800 by 600. What if I were to capture my P5 video at 80 by 60? So you can see here, and uh, you know, not drawn perfectly to scale, this is one tenth the size of this one. Uh, well, it's actually not one tenth because 
it's two-dimensional, but the width is one-tenth, the height is one-tenth. So really it's one one-hundredth the size. I think that's right. Oh boy, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. The point of this is there is a relationship between these two. If I take any x value here, its corresponding place there is x times 10. If I take any x value here, its corresponding place here is x divided by 10. So I need a new variable, like scale, which is going to keep track of that relationship between my source material and the place where I'm drawing. <laughs> Just knocked into a light. I looked at the light and I'm kind of half blinded. Everything's going to be OK. <clears throat> so, um, but this would be a terrible, terrible, terrible name for a variable. Terrible name for a variable because scale is actually a built-in P5 function. So you really want to watch out, uh, not name your variables things that already exist in P5. It can cause all sorts of problems. And there's all sorts of interesting ways around that, a topic for another time. So I'm going to call this a V scale for video scale. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to go back to my code, hello, back to my code. And I'm going to add a variable called uh, V scale and I'm going to make it, um, the value 16, because I think that will kind of do the math, work the math out nicely. I'm actually going to make my canvas 640 by 480. And then I want my video size to be the width of the canvas divided by V scale and the height of the canvas divided by V scale. So I want the video to be smaller, the canvas to be bigger, the video to be 1 16th of the canvas, the width and height that is. Okay, so once I've done that, now, uh, you know, for a second here, let's just comment this out. Uh, actually, let's just leave it in there. It's going to do weird things and run this. You can see that the video is here, small, very low resolution. And who knows what's going on in here. All that broke because my math is now way off. Well, actually, what I want to do is not even bother to set pixels anymore. I do want to look up pixels in the video, but instead, what I want to do is for each pixel, now draw a big rectangle that's 16 by 16. Um, um, so here we go. Instead of, I want to fill that rectangle based on that brightness and draw a rectangle at x, at y, that is v scale, v scale. And let's run this, and you can see, uh, huh, oh, oops, and let's get rid of this update pixels. We don't need that anymore. Come on, I think I might have frozen. What did I do here? Oh, okay, well, there's some mistakes here. I just realized, terrible mistakes. I was trying to, um, <laughs> are you paying attention? What have I missed? So first of all, now that I'm looking, I'm looking at the video's pixels, right? The video thing, this is the small thing. I want to iterate over its pixels and do things bigger in the canvas. So I've got to go back, and I was being very loosey-goosey about all this. I've got to look at the video height and the video width. And in my formula, in looking at the pixels, I need the video width as well. So now, and I think I might have crashed the browser. Uh, so let's close. Look at this. Look at me crashing. You're not really doing P5 unless you crash a browser every once in a while. Doing P5? I don't know what that means. You're not really programming P5? Uh, <laughs> This was going well a second ago. Uh, there we go. So you can see something happened, but whatever happened doesn't make any sense. Why? I forgot a really, really crucial detail. Looking at my code, the x and y values are the x and y positions in that low resolution video, but I want to see them in their, in their spots in the actual uh, canvas itself. So. What I need to do is multiply, scale back up by V scale. V scale. And now, magic of magic, we should see, and just, we should see that I have exactly what I expected. Now, you can see the performance is quite good. I don't know what the size of that is, 32, 24, something like that. It's pretty low resolution. Plenty of resolution to get some sense of the image. And you can see I now have this pixelated version of myself. And I could go back to the RGB values. I could do, you know, I could start to do all sorts of weird things. So this, I think, is the moment where I could stop and say, hey, now you be creative. Why don't you draw circles instead or strange hexagon, hexa hexagonal shapes or other images to make this other kind of mosaic. But, you know, uh, text, you could put text in there, whatever you want to create this sort of mirroring effect that's abstract. But I think something that I'll show you that I think is worth looking at is what's the sort of bare minimum, and the reason why I chose brightness is brightness of each pixel is kind of the bare minimum value 
to convey the information of the image. So what I want to do is just draw each pixel as a rectangle with its size relative to brightness. And I can use the map function. So let me create a variable called w for like width of that rectangle. And I want to map the brightness of each pixel, which goes between 0 and 255, to a size of that rectangle. Dark, excuse me, dark pixels should be small rectangles. Bright pixels should be large rectangles. So between 0 and v scale itself. And then I want each pixel to be white. And I want its size to be that w. So you can see what I'm doing now is I'm saying, look at every pixel in the low resolution image, get its brightness, map that brightness to some size, and draw a rectangle in the higher resolution canvas according to that particular brightness. And here we go. So let me hit refresh. And you can see this is what I've got now. So you can kind of see, am I in there? <laughs> can I create a pose that you can recognize? But if I zoom in here, right, zoom in really close, you can see that what's happening is these are just little rectangles that are getting bigger with brighter pixels and smaller with darker pixels. Very, very simple idea, a little bit of information. You'll notice that the rectangles are kind of growing from the corner. So really I should probably use, if I you know, was thinking about symmetry and design and all that sort of stuff that maybe somebody else knows about, I should probably use rect mode center. And then if I refresh the page, you should see that now the rectangles are growing from their center if I zoom in and kind of move around to create some various effects. Um, and you know, they're a little bit, it's a little bit off now. You can see at the bottom the math is off. So I could probably shift everything to the right and down by v scale divided by two and let you add that part if you want to play around with this. But I would say this is the basics of an idea of how you might uh, look at the pixels of a video and redraw them in a different way while remaining on that grid. So one of the next things I'm going to show you is how to just forget about this idea of the grid entirely and create a painting system that paints the pixels of a video. And that's what I'll look at next. I should mention one other thing, though. Even though this looks correct to you, right? I stand here, I move my arm to the right. My arm moves to the right behind me. A little bit of a lag, but it moves to the right nonetheless. It's not actually mirrored. If I were in some kind of art installation and I'm looking at it, as I move my arm to the right, what I'm seeing on the screen is it moving to the left. So I'm actually just going to reverse that, even though it'll look reversed here. But I think this is useful for you in case you don't know how to do this. Well, because a way to reverse it, by the way, is if I'm looking up if I'm going to draw the rectangle here, I could just look up the pixel over here. And then the rectangle here, I look up the pixel over here. So for every pixel on the left, look up every pixel on the right. And the way to do that is just to say width minus the x value minus 1. right? Because if I have an image, <laughs> you're over there. If I have an image that's 320 pixels wide, 0 should map to 319, 1 should map to 318, 2 should map to 317, et cetera, et cetera. So I can just, without having to actually manipulate or flip the image, I'm looking up every pixel. I could just look at the other side. A quick way of doing that is to say video.width plus x, oh, sorry, sorry, minus x plus 1 plus y. And I think parentheses wise, the, you know, just to be more clear, I might put parentheses here, but I think it should be fine anyway. So now if I hit refresh, we can see here um, it's reversed. So it looks reversed to you, like I'm going to give myself a high five. <laughs> high five! <laughs> high five! I'll do that on my own time later. But it actually now looks mirrored properly when I look at the screen here. OK, so this concludes this tutorial of making a brightness mirror with P5.js, create capture, rectangle, rec mode center, and a whole bunch of other things. And I'm going to go over here and hit stop and see you soon.